Virtual environments allow us to manage separate and isolated Python environments for each of our Python projects. In this video, you will learn what that actually means. You will also learn to create and manage your own virtual environments for your Python projects using a built-in module named Virtual ENV. So let's get started. Before we learn to create virtual environments, let's first understand what virtual environments are and why they are needed in the first place. When you start working on larger Python projects, you'll have to use different packages and modules that don't come pre-installed with the standard Python library. These packages and modules are constantly being updated with every new release. Let's suppose that you worked on a web scraping project that uses a library called requests of specifically the version 1.1.0. After a few months, you then worked on another project that uses a different version of request, say 2.0.0. Now, if you have to go back to working on your first project, you will either need to change the entire code base of the project to make it compatible with request version 2.0.0, or you'll have to uninstall version 2.0.0 and reinstall the old version 1.1.0. More often than not, your Python projects will use different versions of many such packages or even an entirely different version of Python that won't be compatible with one another. Virtual environments allow us to solve this problem. Instead of using a single and global Python installation for all our projects, we can create different virtual environments for different projects. Let's now understand what virtual environments are. Virtual environments allow us to create isolated environments for each of our Python projects. Each virtual environment will be independent of one another. Due to this, they can have different Python versions and their own versions of packages and modules. To resolve our earlier problem of conflicting versions of the request library, we can have separate virtual environments for each project. Each of these virtual environments can then have their own separate packages of different versions. In order to create a virtual environment, we can use a built-in module named virtual env. Let's look at how we can create virtual environments. I'll first create a directory called project1 and I'll open a terminal in this workspace. On my code editor, I've already created a directory called project1 and I've opened a terminal in this folder. By default, we are using the global Python environment. Let me show you what I mean. First, let me clean this up. So let me hide this and this. And now on my terminal, if I say which Python, we can see that Python from the global installation is currently being used. Now I'll also pip list. So let me say P I P L I S T. And we can see that my global Python environment currently has these libraries and modules installed. Now let's create an isolated Python environment. So to do that, first let me clear up my terminal. To create an isolated Python environment, I can say Python dash M this dash m will allow me to run a specific module directly and then the module name which is virtual env then the next parameter is the name for our virtual environment let me call it venv for now and now if i press enter then my new virtual environment has been created when i list the contents of project one now you can see that there's a folder called venv in this folder this VNV directory contains minimal Python setup and executables for our Python project. By the way, if you're finding this video useful, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. Before moving to the next section of the video, the Programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easier to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes, and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. Now that we have created a virtual environment, let's activate it. I'll go to my terminal and I'll say source venv, which is the folder that was created, slash bin, slash activate. If you're using a Windows machine, the command to activate a virtual environment is slightly different. You can see it on the screen. Now when I press enter here, you can see that there's this venv in brackets in front of this metadata which means that the virtual env venv has been activated. Let me now run the commands I previously ran before. I'll say, let me first clear the terminal. I'll say which python. Here you can see that instead of the global python, 
we are using Python which is inside our virtual environment. If I say pip list then you can see that I see a smaller list of packages which are inside this virtual environment. None of the global packages and modules are available in this virtual environment. Let me now install a specific version of the request library in this virtual environment. So I'll say pip install requests equals equals 1.1.0. Now when I press enter, it says successfully install requests. This version of requests is now available only for this virtual environment. It will not have any effect on our global Python setup. In order to deactivate a virtual environment, we can simply use the deactivate command on our terminal. You can see that currently the venv virtual environment is activated. Let me deactivate this virtual environment. Before I do that, let me quickly upgrade my pip by copying the command here. Oops, something went wrong. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I did not copy it correctly. Let's see. Let me paste this here. And I have the latest version of pip. Now I'll say deactivate. And you can see that the venv in front is gone. Now if I do which python then again I am back to using the global installation of Python. Let me also do pip list and you can see that I, can, I am back to getting the global list of Python modules and libraries. Let me set up one more virtual environment. So I'll go back one folder and I can say mkdir project 2 cd project 2. Now I am inside this project 2 folder. Now I'll say Python dash m virtual env venv just like before this will create another new virtual environment in this directory now i'll activate it so to do that i'll say source e v e n v slash bean slash activate and you can see there's venv inside brackets here i can install a different version of requests so let me say pip install requests equals equals 2.25.0 this will install that specific version of requests inside this virtual env. Now let me do pip list. So pip list. Now you can see that this specific version of request 2.25.0 is installed in this virtual environment for this project. Again, this won't affect our previous virtual environment in any way. Now that we have learned about virtual environments, I highly encourage you to use separate virtual environments for each of your Python projects. This will prove very useful once you start working on a number of projects with different requirements. You can then put all these requirements in a requirements file. This requirements file can then be used to set up the same type of virtual environment on any machine. If you want to remove a virtual environment, you can just delete the folder containing the virtual environment. That's it for this video. If you want to revise these concepts, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.